when it gets colder outside, it's a little less enjoyable to milk goats twice a day. But it's still worth the effort and all of the work. The other day while Kevin and I were working in the greenhouse, Kevin discovered that we had some dill growing in the greenhouse. So we decided to harvest that and bring it in the house. And we realized that since we've had these goats in milk, we haven't made any of our special farm cheese. So we decided today that we should make some fresh dill farm cheese out of our goat's milk. Fresh cheese on the homestead is amazing. The reason why I love this recipe so much is that you can make it and use it the same day. It doesn't require any fermentation time. It doesn't need to age in a cool place. And it actually uses vinegar instead of rennet. We also like this cheese because it's really mild. Even though we're using goat milk today, it doesn't have a strong taste. A lot of times when you buy goat cheese from the store, it's very strong tasting. I don't know exactly why that is, but I'm, I'm assuming it's because of the aging process. We also use milk from Nigerian dwarf goats, uh, they're dairy goats, obviously, and they have a really high butter fat, so their milk is super, super creamy and wonderful. And I think maybe that adds some real amazing qualities to this fresh farm cheese. Now, before we get started, I do want to tell you that this recipe and this process can be made with cow's milk, not just from the farm, but also from the store. I highly recommend that you use whole milk, but it doesn't have to be raw. It can be pasteurized as well. I'm going to be heating this up on the stove top, but I'm using a heavy bottom stainless steel uh, pot. I recommend heavy bottom so that it doesn't scorch on the bottom. And I also recommend that you stir it continuously while you're warming it up. We're going to warm it up to almost a boil, not quite a boil. Um, but almost. Now I'm going to be stirring with a flat utensil. I prefer that because then I get more surface area on the bottom of the pot as I continue to stir just to make sure nothing is sticking or scorching. And I'm just going to hang out here and daydream about the spring garden uh, while this heats up. The temperature that we're going for is anywhere between 190 to 195 degrees. You can go a little bit higher than that. Uh, it boils at 212, so we want to make sure that it's not that hot. Now, milk is pasteurized at about 180 degrees. That's, that's the degree that you would heat it up to um, if you were doing a very fast pasteurization. Even though I'm starting with raw milk, uh, this is essentially pasteurizing the milk, so this will not be raw cheese. It will be, it'll be pasteurized cheese. The milk is at about 196 degrees, so I'm going to turn off the heat, and I'm going to take this off the stove. Now is the time to add the vinegar. So I have two quarts, or half a gallon of milk here. We're going to add a third of a cup of vinegar. It really doesn't matter what kind of vinegar you use. So I'm going to drizzle the vinegar in here and just gently stir it around to make sure it's distributed. And soon after that, curds will start forming and the whey and the curds will separate. I'm only going to stir this a little bit and then I'm going to leave it alone. If you stir it too much, the curds will become small, and then when we press together the cheese, it won't stick together as well. So resist the temptation to continue stirring it. Just stir it enough to, you know, 
distribute the vinegar and then leave it alone. So I'm gonna leave this alone now for 10 minutes and then I'll come back and we'll see how the curds and the whey have separated before we strain it. While our milk is resting and doing its magic, we need to get some other things ready. So we're gonna be straining and separating the curds from the whey. Uh, so we need a big pot to catch the whey in, a strainer, and um, I have a wet cloth or tea towel. Um, and if you wanna use cheesecloth, you can, but make sure that it's damp, that way uh, the liquid runs through easier. So I'm just gonna lay this single layer over my strainer to get, to get that ready. So as soon as I'm ready to pour it in there, everything's all set. In the meantime, also make sure that you get your salt ready and any herbs or spices that you're gonna be adding into your cheese. For salt, I'm gonna be adding a half of a tablespoon of salt to the two quarts worth of uh, cheese. It might sound like a lot, but you know, when you're making cheese, something happens to all of that salt. It like disappears. And I'll tell you that bland, unsalty cheese, it just tastes not very good. So make sure you put in enough salt. So I have one half tablespoon, which is one and a half teaspoons of, I'm using pink Himalayan salt. And then I also chopped up that dill that we found in the greenhouse. And we're gonna be mixing that in as well. The curds and the whey have separated and I want for you to see what it looks like. You can see that the whey is yellow and the curds have come together. And that's what you want to see. If you get to this point and your whey still looks milky, then it means that you don't have enough vinegar in it. So just go ahead and add some more vinegar, just stir it a little bit and wait a little bit longer and that should help. But now we're gonna go and we're gonna strain this and see what it looks like. We'll just bring this over here. I'm gonna sit down my little spatula and we're just going to pour it through. ease your mind about the vinegar. If you're afraid that you're going to taste vinegar in your cheese, you're not going to. All the vinegar is going to fall through with the whey and we're going to end up squeezing a lot of the remaining whey out of here. So don't worry about it. It'll be great. So when the whey has pretty much all um, drained out of here, this is when you want to add your salt and your flavorings because we're going to mix it in right now while it's still a little bit wet. So I'm just gonna sprinkle on the salt and do the same thing. With the dill, and then we're gonna mix that in. You want to do this while it's still warm and while it's still a little bit wet also, because when we press it together, then it will form, um, it'll stick together, it won't be crumbly. We're gonna leave it like this just for a little bit longer to let more of the whey drip out. The texture of this cheese is a lot like mozzarella and it's very mild tasting. It might feel like mozzarella, but it's not a melting cheese. It really is just a good eating cheese. It's fantastic with crackers or just on the side of your plate if you're having a sandwich or a salad. Uh, we just really like it for eating. We're gonna move on to the last step. I have a second towel here that I'm gonna lay down and make sure that this is an absorbent towel. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So we're going to, um, we're going to gather up this tea towel or the cheesecloth, and we're gonna twist it so that um, the cheese kind of turns into a ball in here. And see how we're letting more of that whey out. That's what we want to be doing. So we're gonna twist it. It is kind of hot, so <laughs> be careful. We're gonna twist out 
as much of that way as we can. Ooh, it's hot. Press it in there. And then we're gonna transfer this ball, twist it up onto a towel. We're gonna use then, we're gonna fold it up on here and we're gonna use our body weight to press even more of that way out of there. We're not using a cheese press like you would to make, you know, cheddar or whatever, but essentially we're doing the same thing. Just move it to another spot, dry spot. But we're keeping it in that ball. We're essentially flattening it out into a disc. And once you feel good about the amount of whey that you have gotten out of there, oh, see, there's still some in there. I'm going to keep squeezing that. The more whey you remove, the better it will hold together when you cool it down in the refrigerator. So it's still pretty soft. And it is a little bit sticky onto the towel. So I'm just going to scrape around it. Ultimately, we're going to put it into this glass bowl here. Now, it might not be perfect. Let's put it down in there and any remaining we're going to put in there and press it in there. Now I'm going to be kind of using this bowl as a mold. Press it in there. And then we're going to put it in the refrigerator to cool down. And it will harden up in the refrigerator. And we're going to put it in the fridge to harden up and to cool. And then we'll cut it and take a taste. A couple things here. Uh, the very first thing you want to do now that it's in the refrigerator is clean up. Anything that has any of that uh, cheese on it, stuck on it, you want to take care of right away because I promise you it will turn into concrete on anything it has come in contact with and it's better to take care of it right now. Uh, so I'm going to take the, even this towel, I'm going to take over to the sink and I'm going to wash it out after I eat all these bits of cheese first. Now when it comes to the whey, because this is vinegar whey, it's not the same as a rennet whey, so it's not quite as useful and it's not quite as versatile, but it is still fantastic for your animals. And you can also dilute this with water as a fertilizer for your garden. So in this case, this is gonna go to our animals. Well, the cheese has been in the refrigerator for a couple of hours. Normally I would wait until like the next morning or the next day to take it out because for sure it will be nice and firm, but I want you guys to be able to see it and we are anxious to taste it. It's been a long time since we've done this. So I'm just gonna pop it out of here onto a plate. And uh, already it is beautiful. Let me cut it in half and then we can cut a piece to try. Look at how pretty that is. Cut a couple pieces. One for each of us. Well, I brought the girls in so that we can try some. Kevin's just gonna have to wait until after we're done with the video because he's my camera man. So go ahead, girl. Mm. Yum. That's mm. really good. It is really good. Mm -hmm. good. Perfect amount of salt. I like it. It's really good. I'm so glad it was a hit with the girls. Now we're going to store this in the refrigerator. It'll store for up to a week or so. Uh, we'll probably eat it way faster than that. A lot of times I make bigger batches of this uh, for the freezer. This cheese freezes so well. Uh, if you have a vacuum sealer, it works really well. Otherwise, you can wrap it in plastic wrap and then foil and put it in a freezer bag. We've had frozen cheese, this kind of cheese, in the freezer for a couple of years, and it is still amazing. Uh, just make sure you thaw it out in the refrigerator. It'll thaw out in about 24 hours. It's the best. 
Well, you guys, I hope you try this. It is wonderful, super easy to do, and a very fast way to make some homemade cheese. If you enjoyed this video, and if you're enjoying our channel, right now is the perfect time to hit the subscribe button. We would really appreciate it. Don't forget to check us out on all of our social media. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.